Hello everyone, Namaste. My name is Luke Elijah. Thank you for watching this video. I'm here at the heart of Sophia Academy, which is located at 317 Orchard Road. Right? And my guest today is the chief consultant and owner of this center. Right? His name is Kelvin Cameron Wong. Uh, he's a very special guest because you know, I first met Kelvin uh, about two years ago at the Lionheart Festival. And I, I heard him on the stage speaking, and he was such a good speaker. He was very charismatic, and he knew the, all these spiritual topics that he was talking inside out. He was, he's the expert, right, on so many topics. He's a Kabbalah expert, he does family constellation, and, and many other services. But without further ado, right, thank you very much, Kelvin, for agreeing to appear in this video and sharing with us what you have to offer. Yeah, right. thank you, Lou. Yeah, so it's like quite an interesting um, experience for me also. Okay, so how can I um, uh, talk about, what topic do you want me to talk about? Yes, but you know, a lot of us uh, would like to know, how did you get started, right? Mm -hmm. How was your background, the history, how did you come, how did this center come about? Oh. Um, basically, I started at the age of 15, where when I was like very young, I was very quite connected to tarot cards, and I liked a lot of angels, and work about that. So, when that happened, what happened was that I prepared myself with some tarot cards and some books and I read from it. My grandfather was a communist, so after that, because my father and my grandfather had some situation, so end of the day, I took over the so-called family business and I started to do spiritual work. Mm -hmm. So of course, uh, my partner also uh, had influence for me to become more spiritual. So I didn't know that this journey really brought me all the way to where I am now. So of course I started doing tarot reading when I was 15 years old. So I continued doing it as a part-time during my university days. So after that on, I finally had my own uh, shop at Tanjung Parga. So it was actually quite 10 years ago when 2004, I started to have my own uh, shop and I started to do this service full-time. So basically, part of my background, I went to different countries to learn from different teachers. Part of it, one of my teachers is uh, Simon Halaby who taught me in Kabbalah. Um, uh, Mike Boo from Orasoma who taught me um, the language of colors. And also uh, Bert Hellinger and also Professor Netra was one of my few teachers who uh, taught me family constellation. So of course there were also some other teachers like Neda who teaches me crystals and also uh, Tavita Grant who is um, a miracle who teaches me spiritualism. So these are my so-called teachers who taught me all this work. And from there, after that, I started to explore and I started to teach. And it's more like a calling. So there were a lot of experiences that really asked me to do this job. So, well, I didn't believe it at first. It was a little bit difficult to really believe it. Because, you know, being young, a lot of people will say, ah, go and find a proper job and stuff like that. So, yeah, everyone says that. <laughs> yeah, correct. So, end of the day, I was like saying, okay, um, when I graduated, I couldn't find a job. And so, I asked, I told God, I say I couldn't go without a job. So, God gave me a job at a feng shui consult uh, consultant firm. Which there, I experienced like two, two, two months of hell, living hell. And then, one day, I told God, and I say I can't take this anymore. Then, Within 24 hours, my boss told me I have to choose between my own spiritual work or her shop. So of course, I packed up and went off and then that's where I began the journey. So I'm ever so grateful to the experience and you really affirm that this is what I need to do. Yeah. So that's why I always um, feel that it's very important that you follow your heart and follow the yeah. calling. Yeah, calling. Mm. That's right. yeah, I think this is definitely what you're meant to do because you have so many, so, so many years of experience in this and learning from different various masters and teachers and you're born into a, a family of metaphysicians as well and then your, your prior work experience is also with a feng shui mass, uh, mass center and it's also related, you know, it's still metaphysics and spiritual related mm -hmm. yeah, so I, I think this is your calling, this is what you're meant to do and we're glad to have you do it and yeah. you know, to be able to serve as a light worker alright one of the uh, things that, one of the, one of the fields that you specialize most in is Kabbalah Okay, right. I, I wouldn't say it's my specialized view because it's like the fundamental view. It's a fundamental yeah. view. Okay. Because Kabbalah mm -hmm. it is unlike um, the pop culture how they actually market it or like how the commercial uh, people does it. Kabbalah is a way of life yes. and it is not so esoteric actually. Because 
a lot of people they try to mystify it so that they will like have a restriction to it or it's not so commercialized but unfortunately because as time goes by the information is lost. The is lost. The is lost. Yeah. yeah, it's a misconception because the general public all you know is oh Madonna's into it, right? It's a mystical uh sector of Judaism and it's, other than that maybe this is the tree of life uh, and other than that nobody they don't really know what it entails so perhaps you could demystify for us okay. and explain what it is basically um, if you go to the synagogue which I went and you ask the rabbi you know can you learn Kabbalah yeah. they'll say you have to be 40 you have to be a Jew you have lots to of restrictions be, yes. mm. now basically fundamentally all this were not really the importance because in the ancient times, basically why they restrict it to a certain age to learn Kabbalah is because the maturity is not there. Mm. So when your maturity is not there, then when you study the things, you will tend to be very illusional. Which this is what is happening to most of the Kabbalists who claim they know Kabbalah because a lot of people are doing called magic, which is you know witchcraft or craft work in regards to the Kabbalah. But actually Kabbalah has nothing to do with that. In the Theradanal tradition, which is where I came from, the Theradanal tradition focuses a lot on philosophy, which is basically understanding the tree of life in regards to all the spheres and how it relates to different qualities. So, like for example, Malkuf represents the earth, which also represents our sensories. It also represents that we have to be discerning, be careful of what we do, what our senses tell us may not be true. So, it's really very um, basic, uh, basic and grounded as an attitude. So, if we know the word Kabbalah, Kabbalah means to receive. And it's to receive the knowledge of how to so-called be a better person. That's why in the ancient times, Kabbalah actually has to be uh, read together with the Talmud, which is the Jewish uh, tradition, the conduct of life. So, without the Talmud, when you study the Kabbalah, it's very arifat because um, you don't know what to do. But basically, every ritual, everything that the Jewish people do is all by the principles of the Tree of Life. Now, coming back to us as non-Jews, when we study Kabbalah, we are basically trying to remember the qualities that um, are important to us and we use it as a basis to live our life. Like for example, you cannot have too much of um, mercy towards somebody. There must sometimes be a time when you may say no to somebody. We cannot always uh, pursue things that are not practical or about the past. We have to learn how to be living in the now. All these are in fact related to the rules and fundamentals of the truth of life. So there is actually a practical application where you Correct. can use the tree of life and uh, Kabbalistic teachings yes. in our daily lives. Because in the, the Theradanal tradition, we talk mm. about philosophy, mm. contemplation, and ritual. Mm. Ritual basically is where we ask, it's not like how we will perceive like when we cast a spell, there's a magic word or whatever. Ritual actually means that we are focusing on feeling the energy or the aspect of the sphere. So we may have put certain points and we go through a certain so-called rite and during that rite we doubly emphasize the attributes of the spheres. Contemplation is where we go into meditation we, in regards again to the qualities of the sphere, the sephiroth and the pathways. Now, unlike very, uh, uh, various traditions that emphasize on the path, yes. actually the pathways are something that was being devised by so-called pre, uh, post uh, pre-modern uh, spiritual New Age people. In fact, the old Kabbalists of the Paradigm tradition, we don't even talk about the path anymore. We just talk about the dynamics between two spheres. Like for example, Yeso to Malku, this sphere, is talking about how we as humans always like to bring our past with what is the tangible. So we are always comparing our past where we don't see the now. So this is the situation that comes in this pathway but we don't name it a particular pathway but because during the 17th century there was this uh, movement called the Golden Dawn that really put in, tried to justify that the tarot was in fact uh, from the Kabbalah so they actually integrated the two together so that's why there were a lot of things that so-called mystify the whole experience but 
very simply to say Kabbalah is a way of life. And to learn how to receive the wisdom, the knowledge from the tree of life. And we are like the tree of life. And when we learn these 10 aspects, our spirit or our being or our psyche will start to grow. And that's what we call ascension. Then as it grows into a certain stage, then we start to realize that there's a greater reality. Then a world starts to appear. So we start to climb. And this process, we call it the Jacob Ladder. So it's one of the very important terms in the Kabbalah work because um, in the Bible, we know that Jacob, he went up the ladder to reach to the heavens. So actually, the tree of life, the study of it, is to help us to reach back or find the blueprint back to heaven. In fact, there was a little myth or a legend that said that the angels, they only study the Kabbalah. But they study the Kabbalah to learn how to come down. To, be, to descend. To, yeah, to descend, to learn how to, the ways of the human. But for us, we learn how to go back up to become one with the angels. Again. So it's a very interesting um, thing that a lot of people would shun away because it's so complicated but yeah. it's not um, a subject that is teachable because it can only share and share and maybe in one person's lifetime it may not even finish, finish it. everything yeah. it's too complicated and complex right? right yeah so what about kabbalah initially attracted you to, to first study and then to finally to share and, and spread it because um for me when i was starting this work with my uh, partner there was a lot of inspiration towards like wanting to st uh, study about ascension. So the time during the ascension we know in two zero before two zero one two from year two thousand, yes. there was a hype in the interest in this work. So a lot of people were there's a demand. Yeah, there was a demand and talk about it. So that was where I started to get in touch with Kabbalah. But of course, that time it wasn't so um, popularized. I really went into the depth of it when I went to study Orasoma, which is also a system of color inspired through the Kabbalistic system. So from there, they taught the basic fundamentals of Kabbalah. Then after that, I met my teacher, Simon Halati in England, where he had a summer camp. And the summer camp was very, always packed. Before, six months before the camp is really packed. So very I, popular. Yeah, it yeah. was like, so what happened was that I waited for three years and I couldn't wait until my turn so I got a little bit of a fed up so I <laughs> started to write to them and say, you know, um, I really like to join and I had so I was given a sort of special uh, lot. So I went there and met my teacher. So he really um, inspired me a lot because he knew so much, you know, and he he write books and books on Kabbalah and basically it's not simple terms, it's like so complex but he inspired so many people from different professions to like Kabbalah, like lawyers, you know, like uh, professionals who have no relationship with spiritual life. And they are like so diehard fans. Mm -hmm. So that's why it really got me spurred on. And then when I study the thing, it really interests me because it really shows the anatomy of how everything is linked to Kabbalah. Like even I'm interested in somebody. That process is a capitalistic process. But we are not aware at all until we know the fundamentals that ah oh, so this is how it works. And so when certain things goes wrong, you can really identify it's because certain aspects are not recovered. Yes. That's why it fails. That's why Kabbalah, a lot of people want to get the understanding the keys because by knowing it, they so called cover everything. And Success is so called guaranteed. That's why a lot of people obsess themselves with the Kabbalah. But the true nature of it, a lot very few people really know. Yeah, it sounds really profound. Yeah. Do you offer any courses currently for those who are interested in learning more about the Kabbalah? I wouldn't say I teach Kabbalah because even my teacher say he doesn't teach us it. But yeah. um, we do have a foundation course for people who are interested in the Kabbalah to talk about the sphere according to the Theravadan tradition. Now, um, of course, uh, for us, we also have our uh, Kabbalah share night where we share a chapter from the books of the teacher. So this is on the third Friday of every week. Every week. And we also every week. month. Yeah, every month. Yeah. So we also have this uh, ritual called the Sabbath, which is 
traditionally celebrated by the Jewish family. So, of course, there we will uh, do the welcoming of the Shekinah, which is the Holy Spirit, to descend upon. He said that on Friday is the time where the Holy Spirit comes to this world to help us to gather together and study or study the Torah. So it's quite a nice uh, experience. So yeah. it's, it sounds traditional and, and uh, authentic or skills. How can people join oh. you with this? So they can actually um, register with us. So um, later we will can uh, we can they can actually call us from the at the number of the website. Or, nice. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. I would like to ask you, what is this? It's so colorful and beautiful. I just, ah, okay. I just feel good just even looking at it. Okay, this is called Orasoma. Orasoma is basically a system that is uh, founded by this lady called Vicky Wall. Mm -hmm. Now, Vicky Wall, she surprise surprise lost her sight when she created the system. That means when she first made her first bottle bottle pen, she already had no more eyesight. She can't see at all. So after that on, then she started to create the uh, the bottles through the the way she was so called magically caught through her meditation. So how she came about with the system was that one night she was praying. Yes. And then she heard a voice that says divide the waters, and she saw waves of color. So she was like wondering what was that. So of course being a Catholic, she dismissed all this stuff, mysticism. So after that, she again see the waves of colors and then she hear again divide the waters. So of course she didn't understand why. So on the third day, she asked God and said, I really can't divide the waters, I'm not Moses. You know, how, why, what, what does it mean? So she was so-called led to an underground basement where she had all this um, material because she was a a chiropractor and she was a apothecary, so she worked in the apothecary, so she knew how to make all this uh, liquid and stuff. So, in her words, she was being guided to make the first few bottles. And you can see here there's two colors, you know, two layers of the colors, yeah. and it's divided. So, that was what it means by divided waters. And actually, this is how the first Orasoma bottle came about in the story. Now, after she created it, she didn't know what she created. What happened was that the um, her partner Margaret actually said, "Well, it's nice, so good for display." So as she put it up for display during a festival, people were very drawn to it and start picking the bottle and then the rack because she used it to support the rack. The rack keep falling down. So she realized that people were actually drawn very to drawn it. to the partner. Mm -hmm. Now the bottom layer of the color, what you see that the difference is because on top is made from pure virgin oil, yeah, olive oil, and bottom is water from the uh, Gustenbury well. So basically this is a special creation that Vicky Wall had and the whole process of it is very complex because it's a mixture of crystal, um, plants and also from the human, as in the human experience. So we see that they don't only use crystal like this to brew it, they literally grind the crystal to make the tinctures. Like for example, the greens were bags and bags of emerald. And one of the experiences that they shared was that when they grind the emerald, the whole lab that was making the tincture had rose smell, a smell of rose. So the whole experience is actually very uh, intense. And these colors that come out uh, from different different plants and different crystals like the blue you can see the sapphire inside the emerald from the green and the, the green color you can see all the green herbs the ferns and all that then we can see the white are the lilies and the white quartz and sometimes the diamonds so the whole entire process after they grind it and they make the colors they still have to energize it so the whole entire process of energizing uh, will put it in a so called energizing mood mm. so that's why every bottle has a, we call it a spirit inside mm. and it cannot uh, activate unless the owner shakes the bottle that's why during oral soma consultation we are always going to go shake, go shake because when you shake the bottle the energy get activated and inside the bottle it will start to resonate and go away that's why during the purchase normally the colors are clear but when you start using it then it starts to turn murky and stuff like that because of the energy that we are working with and usually we'll call 
the client to choose four bottles and from there we will start to talk about the person's character so during the consultation we will uh, bring the person through his colors and his complementary colors so it's quite a uh, interesting work because it not only comprises of colors but the system evolved in such a way it encompasses Kabbalah, uh, Ayurveda, Numology, Tarot, I Ching. So even now there is uh, a meridian and a color puncture for the system. So there's actually a lot of extension for this, even to astrology. So that's why this is, as what Mike will say, an ongoing system also. So, an evolving system. Yeah, it's an evolving and ongoing system because the bottle haven't finished. There are still new bottles being created. Yeah, yes. Like for example, just last mm -hmm. year, um, the new bottle 112 is being created. Yeah, that ginger is Raphael bottle. So there is still ongoing creation yeah. of the, the system. How does one use this? You can wear it, you carry it, or you dab it, or, how okay. or sniff it? Okay, they have four treasures in yeah. the Rasova. One is the uh, equilibrium bottle. This is a small set, a travel set. The actual size is 50 ml. Mm. Then there is the commanders and the quintessence. Those you have to sn uh, sniff it is to purify the aura and the quintessences are to bring out your full potential. And there's one that's consumed is called the colored essences where you drip into food or water and you so or, you, ways, yeah, or you drip on the point. Mm. But for the equilibrium bottle, usually we apply it to the body because our skin has the epidermis where when you apply the oil it is absorbed by the skin so it goes to the blood brain and the blood and then it helps to energize the body yeah so would you say a typical consultation consists of a client choosing four bottles as you said four colors and then you read the person's persona or energy and vibration based on the, their selection correct mm. and usually the it's a non-intrusive process where the clients they send they have to choose they cannot tell me i'll tell you i don't know what to choose can you choose for me Obviously, if you want to choose more than four, what is it that really? Yeah. Want, is it possible? Well, basically, four is enough to tell. Usually, at first, yes. the system only had three. Mm. Then, like a lot of people like to ask Vicky, you know, I want to know about my future. And so, okay, Vicky said you can choose one more bottle. So that's how the four bottle system works. But by right, actually, it's only three. Mm, I yeah. see. I see. Yeah. And then, once you've chosen those four, do they stay with you for life, or as you evolve, you kind of choose new new colors? to complement your, your evolved self? Okay, usually when we first time, when we do a consultation for the first time, it's very important we remember the first bottle we are drawn to because we say that this is our uh, soul bottle. Then after that on, our being starts to evolve. But no matter how we evolve, somehow or other, we will always go back to the combination or the color combinations of our soul bottle. But of course some people don't bother about, or can't remember, but Life will bring them as such that they always keep to the, a certain color group. Like some people always go with the pink, some people always go with the yellow. So they always go to a certain color group. Yeah. So do you have do you have clients who have a tendency to choose their favorite color to begin with? And most, for example, most people love blue, mm -hmm. right? You get more clients. Okay, I'm just going to choose it because it's my favorite color, not not well, rather than what I'm first drawn to. Yeah, actually, uh, that, it, that is the process because yes. orasoma is the language of yeah, the color therapy yeah. where we choose colors that are therapeutic to us. So there, it could be your favorite color, your lucky color, your feng shui master tell you what color is good, you know. They can choose. Now for us to register a color is not so easy because for us to register a color means that it has to convince our being that we yes. have to accept this color. So that's why even if your feng shui master tell you this color is good, but your being can't register that color, you also won't choose that color. Speaking of which, what if someone's colorblind? Can they still benefit from the ah, orosoma? Okay, this is a common question from orosoma. Mm. Uh, for orosoma, it, the answer is yes, they can still do orosoma because every color is actually a wavelength of vibration. So even for people who are colorblind, uh, we are not reading really only the color. We are talking about the wavelength. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course there will be slight differences in the interpretation as we see the colors. Yeah, if the person is colorblind, but generally the colors should be consistent uh, should be consistent mm, that's great thank you yeah. for sharing you know yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, you make me excited about learning more <laughs> of this you know and it's so pretty to look at when you agree yeah yeah, yeah. well i'd like to speak next about family constellation okay. i experienced a session before and i found it very intriguing this is very it's a very different modality uh, and you are one of the uh, top 
practitioners that offers it here. Mm. Okay, and it's, it's such an interesting modality because it allows, it, it involves everyone, it allows some play acting, and it, it heals people on uh, of so many different emotional barriers, mm. and, and, and heals them on so many levels, physically, mentally, and spiritually, and emotionally as well. Mm. But could you tell the audience who may not know what family constellation is about, how it came about, and how you can assist them to improve their lives? Okay, I wouldn't really say I'm the top because um, th this has system has been in the in Germany for around sixty yes, years, yes. and there are really a lot of people who are doing this very very devotedly. And this system came about in Germany by this uh, psychotherapist uh, an analysis called Bert Hellinger. So Bert himself is a scientist, and he was a missionary also. So what happened was that. He got into psychodrama first. So from there, he started to recognize that, oh, people have an image, but he couldn't understand why. Then after that, he had an experience where, when he do counseling usually for birth, he brings everybody together. That means all the family members are together together. So in one occasion, what happened was that one of the family members was missing. So, because modern people have to work, so they can't gather all together. So, Bert decided, okay, why not we ask his assistant to sit in the position of the brother. Now, the assistant wasn't somebody who is very uh, angry type of person, who was quite angry actually. So what I thought was that when he sat on the chair, he started to feel very angry. And he started to say, oof, I don't know why, I just feel so much anger. So Bert, or capture the observation and then he said uh, to the family members, is your brother somebody who is very angry? So everybody said, yeah, that is so angry. So that was where Bert realized that actually, just by knowing the name of somebody, we can capture the information if we are sensitive enough. And humans as the receptor has the ability to capture information from our bio field. Everybody has a field and this view, we can call it the aura, the makaba, whichever your term is, has all the message of our genetics mm. from our past, present, even something to our future. So when we, let's say for example, just shake a hand like this, there is already the exchange of the information in the biofield. And that's where the representative can play the role. And when we put that into the, uh, what we call the feel, the characters start to interact based on the information they have. Meaning, this whole enactment, or so-called enactment, is not a channeling. It's basically a replay of what is happening based on what the subconscious or the unconscious is having as a message. So, for example, information like, for example, taboos, incest, or things that you, or miscarriages, or things that you never knew, could be played out during the family constellation. Now, family constellation, unlike other systems, does not have any affiliation to religion. I need to say, in the whole world, there should not be any um, appearance of any ascended masters or spiritual beings. So it's, in a sense, religion friendly. And it's really a work that is focused on exploring the psyche. That means, it opens up all your dynamics in you and to know why is it that you choose certain things. Like for example, for some people who want to save a lot of money, they want to save, they want to save, but at the end of the day, they will do opposite. The reason is because maybe in their family background, they were guilt towards money. Or maybe perhaps they don't want to continue um, living or they want to die for somebody or they want to join somebody deceased. So there's all these different reasons that pull them away from their objective. So that's why a lot of times what we experience um, from my cases is that they might think of some impression. Like for example, they feel that their mothers don't love them and they hate their mother. But when the dynamics come out, their representative may go to the mother. So it's totally different from what they think. Yeah, imagine. Yeah, but it is the truth about the situation. Mm -hmm. So of course, we don't try to convince them. We say this is what it is, it's up to you to decide. But 
we always tell them because this work involves people who have no information about your background. So it's purely non-biased. So that's why we...